Ladies and gentlemen, Madame and Monsieur, Shalomni Paistvo. On November 11th, our Canadian friends honor the wartime soldiers who served and paid the ultimate price for freedom and justice. For Poles, this date has significance as well. More than commemorating our mystic day and the end of the World War I, it also marked Poland's regaining of independence after 123 years of statelessness. On that day in 1918, the dream of generation of Poles was fulfilled. Poland was reborn on the map of Europe. The heroism and dedication of its soldiers under the Pilsudski command combined with joint efforts of the entire nation and diplomatic success by Paderewski, Dmowski, Zamoyski, Roman, and Polish diplomats made this moment possible. Yet it would not have occurred without aid and support of our allies. France, US and Canada were among them. In 1917, at Nagara on the Lake, Canadian authorities established a military facility called Camp Kościuszko, designed to train a Polish army in exile, consisting with volunteers keen to fight for the freedom of Poland during the World War I. Over 22,000 Polish recruits, including 700 from Canada, trained at the site. They subsequently joined General Haller's Blue Army alongside their Polish expatriates in France. This military contingent played an important role in securing Polish independence in shaping the borders of a newborn state. The contribution of our Canadian friends is much appreciated and shall remain so in the collective memory of Poles and Polish diaspora in Canada. Marshal Jordan Piłsudski built the Polish state on the foundation of faith, freedom and security. He directed the struggle of Poles against the Bolshevik invasion to maintain a sovereign nation while preserving the challenges of the state building. The World War II and the Polish-Canadian Brotherhood in arms was further strengthened on several battlefields. Our 303 squadron became the most successful fighter command unit in the Battle of Britain, shooting down 126 German planes in only 42 days. Commanding the Polish RA squadron 303 was the Canadian group captain John Kent of Winnipeg. After invasion in Normandy, the 1st Polish Armored Division under the General Marcher Command was a component of Lieutenant General Guy G. Simons, 2nd Canadian Army Corps of the Canadian 1st Army under Lieutenant General Henry D. J. Kreder. For General Maciek and the men of the 1st Polish Armoured Division, the Battles of Champagne and the Hill 26-2 represented the greatest victory in the West and a long overdue revenge against the Germans. After the battle, Lieutenant General Cryer, Commander-in-Chief of the 1st Canadian Army, sent the following telegram to the General Machuk. 1st Canadian Army is very proud because of the fact that the Polish Armoured Division is a part of us. And in the future, we call continue to fight as at the present time, the mutual celebration of final victory should not be much delayed. Soldiers of both countries collectively helped liberate the Netherlands and Belgium. Our troops shed the blood at the Battle of Monte Cassino. And Poles fondly remember the 26 pilots of the Royal Canadian Air Force who perished over Poland while flying support missions during the Warsaw Uprising. The contribution of our Canadian friends to regain our independence and freedom is so much appreciated and shall remain so in the collective memory of Poles and Polish diaspora in Canada. As the Ambassador of the Republic of Poland in Canada, I am delighted that with the involvement of Canadian of Polish background and the members of the Polish community in Canada, this anniversary of the Polish independence is so important for all of us. Polonia involvement in Canadian life is a perfect example of the social, cultural and historical ties between Poland and the Polish diaspora here in Canada. May a free, independent and sovereign Poland continue to flourish 
in the year that we commemorate over 100 years of independence. We honor the memory of the Polish and Canadian heroes of the First and Second World War. Today, in the honor, we all united in their memory. Thank you very much for your attention. Dear veterans, ladies and gentlemen, commemorating in Canada Armistic Day, the end of the First World War, and the anniversary of Polish Independence Day, is a very important to add that this year we celebrated the 100th anniversary of the Battle of Warsaw, where Polish soldiers bravely defeated overwhelming Bolshevik forces over our streets of our capital. A significant contribution to the victory was shared by Polish soldiers trained in Canadian Camp Kościuszko, located in Niagara on the Lake, who served within the ranks of famous General Haller's Blue Army. Several years later, the Battle of Warsaw was named as the, an important turning point in European history. Then the Second World War erupted, and the independence of Poland was once more violated. Canada was yet again willing to help us. Polish and Canadian soldiers stood shoulder to shoulder and wrote another chapter of Brotherhood in Arms history. Today, the unstable global situation once again proves that peace and freedom require constant effort. Transatlantic relations continue to be of the vital importance of the security of our country. Polish soldiers now serve and build peace in various regions of the world. We are taking our role seriously, but allocating 2% of GDP on military budget and are going to through the largest modernization program in the history of our armed forces. The Polish armed forces are considered as one of the most reliable partners in NATO. In particular, we are proud of the Polish and Canadian military cooperation conducted bilaterally in and in the NATO framework. Over the past 100 years, Polish-Canadian Brotherhood in Arms has been noticed as an undeniable historical fact. Nowadays, Polish and Canadian soldiers hand in hand protect peace and stability across the world. In the NATO mission in Iraq, together with our allied forces, we strengthening the NATO eastern flank in Latvia and the southern NATO flank in Romania. We are conducting training and advisory mission in Ukraine. For more than four years, we have hosted in Poland Canadian Metal Detachment. I strongly believe that our close military cooperation will remain forever. Ladies and gentlemen, on the occasion of the Polish Independence Day, an armistic day commemorating the end of the First World War, I would like to thank all of the Polish Canadian organization in particular veterans, for preserving Polish heritage in Canada and making sure that the friendship between Poland and Canada remains strong. On behalf of the Minister of National Defense, all Polish soldiers and myself, please accept best wishes of the great and bright future for your activity in favor of Polish and Canadian community. And for each of you, best wishes of your help, happiness and prosperous life. Take care of yourselves in this challenging time and stay healthy. Dear veterans, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for your attention.